And hello everyone, welcome back to more Neo Scavenger. We are approaching the Enclave. You are turned in a place... Well, you are turned in a place a bit, and then taken away from the heat of the flame for a while. Finally, your journey stops, your bindings and blight phones removed. As the blurriness clears, you see that you're in a village. Dome-like buildings surround a great fire, with equal parts animal hide and repurposed junk for walls and shelter. Around the village, a mix of regular folk and chalk-faced warriors go about their business. Many are more than casually interested in your arrival. You are taken to a meeting near the great fire. In front of you, a partly middle-aged woman stands by one of the warriors. Her jacket is in the colors of a sunset against which in silhouetted a majestic great uh, crane. Hey man, she says. Pretty crazy gig we got her, uh, her, her here, right? She looks around as if arriving here with you for the first time. <clears throat> oh, she reaches a hand forward. Michelle, I usually get roped into talking to foreigners. Sorta comes with the badge. She points her thumb at the crane. A jack adored him. What? what? Come on, she turns towards the village. Let's walk. A small underage in a town, you walk idly towards the fire. I get to ask. Michelle begins. You know a Philip? She begins careful not uh, to telegraph too much, but you can tell this is the big thing on her mind. Never heard of him. You say, trying to sound as nonchalant as possible. Oh, well, that's a shame, she says. You hear a warrior half snort, half sneaker behind you. Told you he was a grave robber, he says with satisfaction. His painted face looks scarier when he pleased. Oh, that, Philip. What? His painted face looks scarier when he pleased. I'm not a grave robber. Oh, wait, I... I think I understand, so... I think the Philip might be a person who's not a grave robber. So let's say that I am a Philip. I think I... I think that might be it. Actually, you add quickly, if we are choosing between grave robber and Philip, I will go with the later. Philip, you say, nodding. Philip Kindred. Wait, aren't we a Philip Kindred, actually? Oh! <laughs> I knew it! She pumps her fist like she, uh, she just won a bet. See, she taunts the warrior. No need to this bum bowel anyone. Yeah, I think that's, that was the right choice. Who are you people? What's with Ghostface? You know me? Probably the guy told you. But let's ask about it. So wait, you interrupt. You know me? Yeah, she exclaims. Well, no, not personally. Here, she stares you towards a hat. Warm light spills from within and she draws back a flap to reveal a mixture of handmade and recycled furnishings. Michelle reaches over a cluttered desk and pulls a friend down from amidst dried roots, photos and other mementos on the wall. She hands the frame to you. You hold the frame up, examining the old photograph. It appears to be a newspaper clipping, done in that old small town print where the colors don't line up. It's you, or at least someone who ju looks just like you. You have been here before, she says, looking over your shoulder. And check out the talisman. You look incredulously at her a moment, then closer at the photo. Sure enough, you're wearing the talisman. Oh, the the photo's caption reads, Local website editor rec rekindles interest in native history. Oh, nice. You flip the frame over, looking for more, but there is only one thing scrawled on the back. Semper September 2019. Michelle asks a question. Sure. My turn, she says. Where you been hiding since there? Since this, she holds up the photo. And more importantly, how come you don't look any older? Let's tell her. Ever heard of Jai's cryo facility? Might as well cut to the chase. I guess that's that's oh, 
I guess that explains a few things, she ponders. Unfortunately, you continue. I can't tell you much more than that. I can't remember anything before coming out of the cryo. It's like the hibernation wiped my memory. She still looks deep in thought. What is the talisman? So wait, do you know anything about the talisman? This is getting more complicated, not less. Know anything about it? She chuckles. Mom, my ma'am, we made it for you. Then she adds, well, sort of. You just stare, dumbfounded. Oh, this is good. She seems delighted at your confusion. Let me explain, she begins. <laughs> Fucking bad English. Because that's a good one. Yeah, sure. It's a protective talisman, she starts. Some ancestor calling pieces of copper for both luck and protection. This one, she points to yours, you brought to us. My father said you were hiding from a spirit and that you needed protection from him. She continues, the symbol isn't ours, I don't recognize it, and I'm not sure where you got it, she admits. But my father asked the Meduini of Nogdodim, you call them medicine men. <laughs> To give this talisman power to protect you, the spirit wouldn't harm you while it was on. It was a powerful ritual, she recalls. It's one of the events my father recounted on several occasions. She points at the talisman again. That thing was a big deal around here. A spirit was after me? Did you say spirit? She holds up her palms. Hey man, your words, not mine. My father said you were talking about something haunting you. For what? What did I do? Don't ask me. I don't even know if you told my father. Well then, what was the spirit? Oh man, my father probably could have told you. You had some pretty specific instructions and not all of them were, uh, Germany to us, if you get my drift. Germany? What do you mean? Like foreign? Yeah, this thing you were running from, it wasn't ripped from the pages of our history, if you know what I mean. We have never seen or heard of it. Still, she concedes. Some spirits are like that. Not everyone seems to sees them the same. Can you help me get rid of it? Worth, worth a shot, right? Me? Probably not, she concedes. Your hope stakes a dive. I'm not even sure people could do it. You mean the Anishinaabe? Yeah, sorry, she chuckles. That's just our word for the people. Actually, for poor. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, she hurries to add, this is a spirit from someplace else. I don't give a shit. I have a... <coughs> I have the talisman, so... But let's continue the conversation. So, what now? Suppose I want to get rid of this thing chasing me, cause, you know, I do. What next? Well, she ponders, somehow you got its attention, right? I mean, something made you seek us out when you did, and not before. You're thinking whatever that was might be a clue? Totally. She thinks a minute more. You did come to us after your work on that website, the new Earth Ostracon thing. So... When I got to the Hatter in the previous episode, I did get this video feed with this guy, very shady. Maybe that was the spirit? Like, he was very mysterious? Ah, probably it. So spirits don't like the internet? She chuckled. Think about it a sec. You had to knock on a fair number of doors to get that info, right? Probably disturb man more than one spirit digging up the data. So you muse sarcastically. We have narrowed down to any paranormal occurrence listed on a website, trying to list every single one in history. She laughs. Yeah, now you're getting it. You shake your head. <coughs> Seriously though, she holds up a binder. We printed off a section and this place ain't exactly high tech, you know? I'm thinking there's gotta be a more complete copy out there somewhere. You mean like the cyber cafe down the block? Jeez, man, stop being such a downer. Sorry, you say more calmly. Optimism's a lot of work these days. So it's being mopey all the time. It's out there, she says. Has to be. I mean, this data was on everyone's computer at one point, right? At least everyone who contributed to it. That's true. It can't be wiped out from everywhere, she reasons. And if it is, then you're screwed, Philip. 
That brings a smile to your face. Well, at least we agree on that. Come on, she says. Let's show you around. She starts heading towards the great fire. You're standing in the Ashinaimabe tribe all nations gathering area by the great fire. Around you, you see an area where people are sharing a meal together and a trader of goods. Trader. Further away, you see a cluster of huts near a sweet lodge where Joe, the Nuki Medivin, uh, the medicine guy, <laughs> tends to sick and wounded. Rose, the trading pot, sits down for a meal. Visit Joe. We don't need a meal. Let's visit Joe, we were pretty torn up. You're heading towards a cluster of tents near the edge of camp by the forest. Patients reside here, helping to tend the area, many of whom are in rehabilitation from drug addiction or other conditions. Warriors are more visible here, keeping the peace in an area where frustration and desperation can overcome the healing. Ahead is an oblonged dome hut, dome hut from which steam emanates into the cool air. A man adorned in bear symbology seems to be preparing the hut. This is Joe, Midwini of the Nuki Dudem. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it properly. He is the Midwini of the Nuki Dudem for me. Ask Joe to treat in and clean and dress wounds. Yeah. Members of the Nuki Dudem, under supervision of Joe, have learned how to treat wounds and stop bleeding are irrigated with clean water and treated with herbal antiseptic if necessary. Fractured bones are set and splinted. Much of the pain still lingers and it will take time for your body to mend, but at least your wounds are stabilized. You're standing in... oh yeah. Let's browse the trading post. Oh, there, yeah. Uh, the trading post seems to be a place where travelers are supply and offload items, which may be of use to the Anishina Balai. A large portion of the inventory appears to be handmade items from local materials and some scavenged goods. Pick up items to purchase them or drop items to sell them. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Where do I even... Is this bag here? I can buy a campfire? No, I guess not. That would be stupid, right? Cured? What does it mean, cured? Do I have something for sale? I'm not selling those. These are expensive. What I can sell is those pine binoculars. I'm not sure how though. Why binoculars, you may ask? Because they are pretty useless. They were pretty messed up, so... But I can't click on them right now. Let's see, do I have anything else for sale? That's pretty small. So I could probably fit it somewhere to... take my binoculars, but I would have to sell it, which I don't really want to do. So I can't really do anything right now about it. Unless I can sell something else. Oh, its condition is really terrible, so... I will actually sell it. Where is my money? I... Do I not get anything for it? Oh, it's really worthless though. But how do I buy it then? Can I even buy anything that I want? Sling no sheave. Water. I don't think so. I don't really want anything. <laughs> I should really start with it though, shouldn't I? <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty pointless. I don't really want anything right now. I don't think so. And these are very expensive. I don't think I could do anything about it, so...
Let's sit down for a meal. You approach the long table and find an open place on the bench. The food here is plentiful and appears to be a mix of roasted and dried meats, roasted, cor roasted corn or maize, baked squash, uh, baked squash and beans. There is also an assortment of berries and other fruit. Overall the meal is hearty, with diverse flavors of savory and sweet. Uh, it fills your stomach briefly, allowing your mind to wander from a minute to minute survival. The feeling here is one of sharing and respect. Visitors to the table are asked to pay respects to the animal that gave their meat. The three sisters for their fruits and acts all creation. In the distance you see field of crops, but also semi-trailers, sheets of tarp over fra frames. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry and other repurposed grow ops for their food. You begin to understand the real sense of urgency that perimeter patrols must feel in watching over this place. They feel like uh, they walk in keeping the rubbles come out but allowing peaceful travelers passage. You're standing okay. Let's leave. Oh that's huge. I think we will be welcome here the next time. Yeah, that was cool. So now it's time to go for the Detroit again, I guess. So let's do it. I don't see a reason not to, right? I don't think I missed anything in the enclave, but maybe tell me if this is really important and you feel like it would change the way I play my game, then maybe tell me. But other than that, if I missed like something very small, then don't. Something big would be like a quest or a quest giver, and that's it. I don't think I would want anything else. If I missed something else, then well, that's my fault. And past that, I don't really feel like anything else. So guys, I think I will end this episode here. And I will see you in the next episode where I make my way to Detroit again. So thank you a lot for watching. I hope you loved the Enclave. It actually gives you like a hint towards this something that chases you. I think that's what will happen in Detroit. We'll meet this guy again. And this is like the spirit. I wonder if they will like connect that I was at the enclave, but it might not. We'll see though. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode. Bye bye.